Modern society likes to paint a false picture that nothing comes from Africa except powerless, defenseless, and uncivilized people and ideas. But this is the furthest thing from the truth. Ancient Greek scholars studied in Africa. Ancient Greeks knew more about the racial and cultural identity of Africa than the modern day European historians whose primary goal is to expunge Africans from world history and make our culture their own. Ancient European intellectuals literally risked their lives traveling through the sea and through the desert just to study in Africa. They went there to learn science, mathematics, politics, religion, astrology, philosophy, but don't expect to find this in Western world textbooks because the distortion of African history was deliberately and strategically planned and executed. Aristotle, he was one of the most famous Greek philosophers. He studied in Africa for 22 years. He expressed in his literature that the Chemites and the Ethiopians had very dark skin. When Alexander the Great invaded Kemet in 332 BC, Aristotle took advantage of the opportunity and ransacked the Kemetic libraries, stealing all of the books that he could get his hands on. He then went back to Athens and opened his own academy. His philosophy doctrines are from the Memphite theology. Herodotus was a Greek historian who was the first amongst his peers to speak of Africa in a positive light. And ironically, he just so happens to be the most criticized. He gave an unbiased account on what he experienced while in Kemet. He spoke of the land being rich and its men being the tallest, most handsome, as well as the longest lived. He also stated that the Kemites had woolly hair and black skin. He gave a comparative analysis between Greek religion and Kemetic religion. He then drew the conclusion that Greek religion was heavily borrowed from Kemetic religion. He was impressed by the Kemites' high level of advancement in civilization. He argued that in Kemet, white-skinned people were the minority and that the Greeks and Romans were envious of their wealth in literature. Socrates studied philosophy and medicine in Kemet for 10 years. Socrates was said to have participated in African spirituality rituals. Before his death, Socrates admitted to plagiarizing the work of an African historian named Aesop the Ethiopian. He is credited with the saying, man know thyself. However, these words were already written on the outside of African temples. Plato was a student of Socrates and when Socrates died, he went to Kemet and studied for 13 years. Plato's four virtues, wisdom, justice, courage, and temperance was actually Plato's four virtues, wisdom, justice, courage, and temperance was actually copied from the original Kemetic belief system. These can also be found in the Kemetic Book of the Dead. Pythagoras studied in Kemet for 22 years. He studied geometry, astronomy, medicine, and theology under Kemetic high priests. He was shown proof of the theorem of the square on the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. Africans were using that principle a thousand years before he stepped foot on that continent. He did not discover this principle, so it's very misleading to name the theorem after him. The Ahmeds, or the Rhine's mathematical papyrus, dates back to 2000 BC. This artifact shows how the Chemites recorded a variety of mathematical techniques, such as notations, proportions, fractions, algebra, and geometry. The artifact was purchased in 1858 by a Scottish man named Henry Rhine. It was then placed into the British Museum. The papyrus proves obvious application to the construction of the pyramids. Let's talk about Hippocrates. Hippocrates studied medicine in Kemet for seven years. He's known as the father of medicine. However, Africans wrote medical books like the Hearst Papyrus, which dates back to 2000 BC, the Kashun Papyrus, which dates back to 2133 BC. These books contain gynecological these books contain gynecological treatments and more. On the walls inside the temple of Kom Ombo, you'll find medical tools that were used by the Chemites in operation, like forceps, triceps, retractors used to separate skin, birthing chairs, and even the modern day RX prescription symbol.
In 47 BC, African doctors delivered Queen Cleopatra's son, Caesarian. The procedure used to deliver him was named after him. When African doctors were writing and performing medical procedures, Hippocrates wasn't born until 2000 years later. Imhotep, who was born in 2800 BC, is the world's first recorded physician and multi-genius. He should be the real father of medicine. Dr. Jackie Campbell from the University of Manchester examined the papyrus that dates back to 1500 BC. She affirmed that although classical scholars have always referred to the ancient Greeks as the fathers of medicine, her findings suggest that the Chemites were practicing a credible form of medicine and pharmacy way earlier. Instead of medical students taking the Hippocratic Oath, they should be taking the Imhotep Oath instead.